And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the men who stare at sports ball. A sideshow of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk and currently long su long suffering uh, Minnesota sports fan, good br better known as Mildra. And with me, I have two good two good brothers in my in, here in the temple with me. On one hand, we have we have the man who is see who is seeing more red than the Hawks. Good, br good brother Akira, and on the other hand, we, on the other hand, we have the we have the man who is who is um la who is laughing at everybody in Toronto every year. Good brother Matty. Except for the Blue Jays, they're, they're good this year. The Blue Jays seem to be inconsistent. Like they'll be good, then they'll be not so good, then they'll be good again, then not as good. It's like pick a lane, Grandpa. <laughs> Although the big quest the big question I have when it comes to the Jays is how much how much of that good is tied to just Vladdy? I'd say about sixty five percent at least. Mm -hmm. Good fucking chunk. Oh yeah. So normally I would not cover the NBA. Because I because I find I find there's a lot of a lot of the dichotomy of the NBA, I am not a fan of. Even though, even though I enjoy me, even though I enjoy me some basketball, especially now that I'm at an age where I'm not having people hound me about about the about the fact that I should be playing basketball because of my height. Well, given what ha given what happened, le given what happened last ye last year, or la th during the last finals, better no better known as. Everybody, everybody laughing, everybody laughing at first take for the fact that they had to suffer the indignity of being in two, of being in two markets that aren't Los Angeles or or the tri-state area. Suck it, Stephen A. <laughs> or at least suck it up. Mm -hmm. No, because the, no, because we had we had ma we had a match between the Bucks and the Suns, two people who hadn't who haven't been to the finals in decades, and obviously the Bucks won. Everybody has to eat shit for all the for all the talk that they've been doing for the last few years about Giannis being overrated, and the and the one that person ain't that overrated anymore, folks. And the one person who was laughing all the way to the fucking bank for the last three months is Sir Charles, because he had it he had it pegged from the start that the that the buck that the Bucks were going to be winning it. And because of his luck with guarantees, everybody thought that he was full of shit. But nope. So, uh, so obviously, he, obviously, he's riding high on this thing since everyone who doubted him has to eat crow. That's damn good crow. <laughs> A little bit heavy on the humiliation, but still damn good. Mmm, mm. crow. And that's saying some, because he even put it over his um f his sons, which he's always he's always seen as as his team, even when he w even when he wasn't with them, because he um didn't listen to Michael Jordan. Then again, Sir Charles and Air Jordan and his Ernest uh, very rarely uh, agreed on things. It it more has to do with the time that um that him and Scottie Pippen were teammates. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't go over well. But, th but because of, because of what went down and the amount of, and the amount of injuries, something something that we are very familiar with because of the injury bowls, um, mm -hmm. that happened that happened in the postseason. There seems to be a couple of things. One, for all accounts, it looks like this whole play in round gimmick is here to stay. Which, um, unlike unlike when say baseball did it, I'm perfectly fine with with this because it allows for more chaotic setups, as opposed to when baseball had that had that expanded playoff series last year, that um led to baseball led to a lot can use it, baseball can use it, basketball yeah not so much. Um, well the big the big problem when baseball did it is that you had a bunch of teams that had. Absolutely no business being in the being in the playoffs. Hi Cincinnati, bye Cincinnati. 
I, a, AKA, AKA the um, involuntary celibates because they can never score. But for the, but for the longest time, there's been that we we all had to deal with the dark days a few years back where it was just warriors calves for the umpteenth fucking time, and and then it seemed that we were gonna get an unfucking of the league with um. With the win from with the win from the Raptors, which I would have paid good money to be at the, to be at the parade during that because holy shit, <laughs> it was at a time where I could not afford to go to Toronto to even go to, to, to even do, but it is what it is. Mm-hmm. But then the, then there was then after after the um, bubble period, it seemed like we were getting refucked due to the due to the win from the Lakers. But then we had last year, where everybody ended up getting everybody ended up getting injured, and I get the feeling that we may that that with the amount of injuries that happened and the amount of reli- amount of reliable names that are having durability issues, I get the feeling we might be in the in the burgeoning stages of a transitional period. And it's for that reason that I decided to put um put the NBA back in the back in the consideration list. Now, as far as how long this is going to last or whether or not this is a temporary reprieve, um jury's out on that front, but I do but I do get the feeling that another empire will take its place. I mean, we're already going to have that with hockey because it look because it looks like that's what Tampa Bay is turning into. No, oh, Jesus, the NHL is fucked. Um I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say that they're as fucked as um, the NBA was dur- during the be- during the earlier chunk of the of the 2010s. But um, exercise caution is what I'm saying. And we'll we'll be get we'll be getting into the NHL thing next month. But that be that being said, I figure this. I figure this is as good a time as any to look into the Eastern and Western Conference for the NBA and see. How far? How far do we think that? How far do we think everybody's gonna go, if at all? And to that end, I think a good par- place to start is gonna be the Eastern Conference, or as it's been known by some, the Eastern Conference. Here we go. So we're starting off at the top. I apologize in advance, Coops, but um, we got to talk about the Hawks. Um, I'm not too hard about it. Okay, I will give I will give the Hawks cr- credit for one th- for one thing last year, putting Nick fans in their place. <laughs> well, duh. That is much appreciated, much more appreciated than you think. Mm-hmm. That be that being said, um, this is the Hawks are very much one of those one star teams that if they're star if they're if um Trey is out if Trey is out on injury again they don't have a chance, which is why um. I don't see. I don't. I the highest I see them going is play in, or or at worst, at best, um, first round exit. Like they got some stuff there, but it's not nearly enough to com- to really compete. Oh, hey, Zell. Yeah, I was kind of. I was. I was asking what the hell you guys were doing. Sports ball. Yeah. Yep. Ah. The NBA is unfucked, so we're so we're talking about sports ball. Ah. No, I'm probably gonna bounce. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to, trying to relax after the whole Nintendo Direct stuff. Ken says I blames you. Mm-hmm. Um. Honestly, I'm, honestly, I was having fun with the Nintendo Direct stuff. I mean, have you seen the Mario movie announcement? <laughs> I um. I'm go. I'm go. I'm withhold. I'm withholding judgment because all I have right now on that is is just a cast. Call me when there's some actual footage. Yeah. Same here. Bam. Hope you guys have fun with that. I'm bouncing. All right. That was your Zeltrax Millennium cameo for the evening, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Um. But next we have the Bo- the Boston Celtics. Um. All right. So, all right. It's time to piss on everybody in Massachusetts. 
Nah. You hate to. See, I would say you hate to see it, but um, that'd be a lie. No, you you love to see it. Boston sports finally eating shit. It's about fucking time. <laughs> there, they. I have absolutely no high hopes when it comes when it comes to Boston. They they do have a de- they do have a decent top two, but the big but the big problem that I have is um. They have they have run off they have run off everybody worth a damn, simply simply because simply with all the um, with all the times that they've choked. The last the last draw was the last draw was them running Kyrie out of town. I mean, you fucked up there, boys. Yeah, because yeah, because blaming one player is, has always worked out. Whenever, whenever you have relentless choking, usually it's the coaching tree, not the, pl- not, not a couple of players. Um, but then, then we get to the more arrogant end of end of the tri-state area, the Brooklyn Nets. <laughs> <laughs> At least they're not the Knicks. <laughs> oh, we'll begin to the Knicks in a minute. Oh. Aren't we all? Yeah. The, the Brooklyn, you now you would think with the, you would think with the Kings ransom that they man, that they managed to get a couple years ago that they would be a lot further ahead than they are. The problem has been, as it always is, injuries. You got a lot of you got a lot of people who kept getting in and out of the in and out of the um, bench, and beca- and because of that, it's kind of hard to be consistent. I see the Brooklyn Nets kicking a lot of ass in the regular season, and then making an early exit, like second round, ex- second round exit at most. Uh, hopefully, you don't have another issue where their players are br- are trying to bring in or trying to smuggle weed through a thermos can again. <laughs> Oh uh, god, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, that was a th- yeah, that was a thing. Um I will say I will say I can un- I can understand why Jay-Z so- sold his share of the company. Mm-hmm. But they do s- the Nets do seem to have do seem to have that problem of of just gra- of just grabbing just grabbing names. Because that's worked out so many times in the past, right? Right. Then we then we get the Charlotte Horn- then we get the Charlotte Hornets and <laughs> You are so fucked. Folks, we don't have to say a damn thing else. Just let let I'm gonna let Monk keep laughing. You yeah, gave twenty you gave twenty million to Nick Batome. Wait, what? Uh, a guy who's 20, a, yeah, twenty million on who? <laughs> Actually, it's worse. I think I think it was like twenty-two million on who? Nick Batome. Who? It's, yeah. <laughs> Seriously, who? He's at oh. best a, at best a role player. It's like, I mean, good good on him for being paid, but. Fuck. He's a he's a role he's a he's a role player at best. That's not exactly something. That's not exactly top. That's not exactly um the the um skill level that you give to somebody who's supposed to be the guy. If you're paying th- if you're paying that much money, then you then it should be to him. Whoever that the guy the guy who you can build who you can build everything around, and he ain't it. So um. Jo- so Jordan once Jordan is still hasn't gotten over his gambling habits. Nope. <laughs> um, how's that last dance coming? Uh, how's that last dance money coming there? Uh, there, Michael. Yep. Speaking of which, let's talk about the Bulls. Ooh, um, I love it when it, surprisingly and not planned, ladies and gentlemen. Hmm. And. To, now I do I do not see the Bulls going very far yet, but um, 
I do think that they have a fair amount of intrigue this year, so it will be interesting to see how they develop. I can I can see them making the postseason in a couple in a couple of years. From what I've read, the rebuild is going well. Mm-hmm. So that that that's a good sign. Yes, they are still sucking, but there's still a little bit of purpose to that sucking. It, that that's not exactly the worst thing in the world. As long as they stay the course and don't th- and don't think, okay, we've got enough. It's time for a push. Th- they'll be fine. So the key the key thing whenever you do- whenever you're doing these kind of rebuilds is that. You always have to be aware that these are go- that these are going to take time, and throwing money at free- throwing money at free agents or throwing or throwing high or throwing um, draft picks at high at high value rookies in the short term never works. A proper rebuild is going to is going to take years and it take and it takes a lot of time um, sucking. I will I will state I will state if you try and pursue your next dynasty or try and have your, or try and have your next dream team um stop because all because all you're going to do is fuck yourself over and it's going to take a lot longer to rebuild your rebuild pretty much um then we get the Cleveland Cavaliers and once again this is another this is another case of you're still fucked because you're still dealing with all of those, bi- you're still dealing with the pe- with the with penance for all of those big ass contracts that LeBron roped you into. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> so, so g- then, uh, if there if there was anybody in the last few years in 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 Cleveland who I feel bad for, it's D Rose. I like the guy, but he keeps getting injured. Unlucky bastard. Um, <laughs> speaking of unlucky, let's talk about the Pistons. <laughs> <laughs> the pist, the Pistons, as far as far as I'm, up until up until recently, had the longest losing streak in the post in the postseason in the modern era. Detroit, oh my leg! <laughs> Like we're we're talking I th- I think it was like I think it was 14 straight playoff losses. And I don't I don't see them getting any I don't see them getting any better. I see I see the Detroit Pistons as a team that is good enough to make the playoffs and that's it. It's like congratulations you made the you made the playoffs by kicking it by kicking the asses of a bunch of weak teams. Now you get to face now you get to face a real team and get swept. Um, in the, in that in that regard, I could say that they're the um, basketball equivalent of the Mulkey brothers. Ooh, that's my one, Maddie. Do we even care if they're ones? <laughs> I need I needed to think I needed to think of a notable jobber, but the but the problem is notable jobber is um. A bit of an oxymoron. It's a good, deep, it's a good deep cut, though. Mm-hmm. So then we get to the Indiana Pacers, who I really, I really feel that the Pacers window has been shut, and I and I feel bad about it because the Pacers have a habit of doing everything right, and then something happens to fuck them over. Like they just ha- they just have really 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 bad luck, and of course of course this t- of course this time once again the the thing that fucked them over was injuries, doing really good and then your star guy ends up ends up um ends up on the IR, and you're fucked. Yep. <laughs> so because of that, I don't I um. I see. I see. This is getting. I, I'm not going to say this is a tank year. It's going to be a um, punishment year. Then we get to the Miami Heat. Um, Good news. You're still fucked. Yeah. <laughs> How's it? As as unless I'm mistaken, they still have to deal with Jimmy Butler, and 
And um, as a as a Minis as a Minnesota Timberwolves fan, all I have to say is, I tried to warn you. Good news, everyone. You're fucked. <laughs> they meant it. It really. Fi it really feels like they just happened to drunkenly luck into luck into a finals based on what they've done since. I mean, maybe th maybe they'll be able to be good if. Look, it's look. It's only a matter of time before Jimmy Buckets wants out wants out of there, so we can so we can go get so we can go have another locker room get pissed off at him. <laughs> at this rate, at this rate, he's gonna be he's gonna be playing he's gonna be playing in the Euro League in five years, is what I would uh, say. But then, remember the last time that you had a bunch that you had a bunch of NBA stars um, playing playing against a bunch of Europe a bunch of European stars, and they got fucking swept. I remember. Oh, but then, off of off of the flotsam and jetsam, we have the Milwaukee Bucks. I never thought I'd be saying um, NBA champion Milwaukee Bucks in my lifetime, but here I am. That's got to be a little bit of salt. That's got to be a little salty there. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's. As if, as if I don't hear enough insufferability from my, from my, from my, um, from my, na from my neighbors, especially with whether it be the axe, whether it be pissed off Aaron Rodgers, or what, or whether it be this, um, I do. I know that I know that they're gonna want they're gonna want really hard, really badly to um, repeat, but I think they're gonna be dealing with championship hangover. I'm get, we're gonna see them. Make a deep playoff run and then get knocked out. Sounds about right. I see. I see them making conf. I see them making a conference finals exit. Who will not make a con? Who will not make a conference? A conference finals exit is the Eastern Conference's answer to Florida man, the Orlando Magic. <laughs> <laughs> you are not only just. You are not only just fucked. You are irrelevant. That is a special kind of fucked, folks. Mm -hmm. And it is for that reason that there's not a whole lot I have to say about you because you can't because you can't seem to make any kind of noise. So what what's worse, being a clown show or be or 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 being non-existent? I no say shit, being I... non-existent. Speaking although speaking <laughs> of non-existent, don't think I forgot about you. <laughs> Let's get to the other. Part of New York, the clown show that is the New York Knicks. Sell the team, Dolan. The home of our friendly neighborhood Spider Cuz. <laughs> the only good, the only way, the the only reason, the only reason that the New York Knicks are relevant is Spike Lee. Let's let's not let's not even beat around the bush there. And and now. Well, I, well, let me let me refra let me rephrase that. Spike Lee and Fat Joe, and Fat Joe's this is, and Fat Joe's is one of the most overrated one of the most overrated rappers of the two thousands. Oh, as one good song keeps singing it forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. I'm, I'm gonna stop now. Well, it doesn't help that he's just a poor man's version of Big Pun. Rest in peace. Yeah, but they had th they had thought th they had thought that beca that because of the fact that they ha that they had a brand spanking new roster and w and were bringing in Julius Randle that they w that they were going to be finally hit hitting the big time again. I'm like, you guys had you guys have not done anything since '73, and now you and and just because you ended up grabbing a bunch of power forwards, now you think you're the hot shit. I the the downside the downside with um with an expanded playoff series, regardless of sport, is that you end up with a handful of teams who have no business being there, and the Knicks are a prime example of this. The if Knicks were... <laughs> are Dwayne Gill. <laughs> that I can that I can perfectly I can perfectly see. Um, Look, the Knicks play out of Madison Square Garden. 
fuck you. That's my one. I don't care. I'll have another one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but yeah. So as always, sell the fucking team, Dolan, because is it? You want to know what? You want to know what the biggest joke is with the Knicks? They at one point entertained the idea of trying to get Giannis. <laughs> now, granted, this was before Giannis ended up winning winning a ring, but um, even back even back then, I knew that was never going to happen because why the hell would he go to New York? Oh, why would why the hell would he go? Yes, they yes they need shooting help, but um, why but there's also the issue of the New York market. Like I got much love for my br- for my brothers and sisters in in New York, but um, y'all are delusional. You <laughs> may as well accept that fact. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And truth be truth be told, truth be told, um, until I. I don't see the New York Knicks going anywhere until Do- until Dolan sells because nobody's going to want to work with him. Although at the very least, the Knicks continuing to suck means that means that we get to watch Stephen A. Squirm every year. Especially especially that whole thing where they were trying to tank so hard to get Zion. And thinking we're fi- we're gonna get it we're gonna get the first we're gonna get the first pick in the lottery, and they end up getting third. <laughs> <Ta-da>. <laughs> yes, that yes that was a couple of years ago, but it's still funny. It's still a game for joke, folks. Kind of like the Knicks. Mm-hmm. Speaking of jokes, let me talk about the Seventy Sixers. And oh boy, do I have some things to say because. The Sixers, I consider, I consider them to be the lull cow of the year. For years on end, we had heard the whole thing of trust the process about how they about how they had this five year plan to to win a championship. Okay, first question: If you were that gung ho on winning, why did you hire Doc Rivers? Doc Rivers does knows nothing but choking. Second, He's fucking trash. Secondly, mm-hmm. okay. Before I get into this, I want, I, I want to say, I want to say one thing. Joel Embiid, I'm putting you in, I'm putting you in a bubble, and I'm moving you right over here. All right. I mean, the worst I can say about Joel Embiid is that he's got durability issues. But then we get to Ben Simmons. Oh boy. Kobe a few years ago had said Ben Simmons needs to get a jump shot or he's going to regret it. I think the last few years have proved him right on that, especially given in the last series that he that he was in during during the playoffs. He was nothing but goose eggs when it came when it came to shooting. I don't know I don't know whether it's I don't know whether it's his coach whether whether it whether it's whether it's a confidence issue, but for whatever reason he won't fucking shoot. And at his at his size, that is completely unacceptable. Which is what which is why I'm not surprised that he's been demanding a trade out of um out of Philadelphia. But the but the big question is, who's gonna want to take him? <laughs> the only the the only team I could see being desperate enough to do it would be a terrible idea, just because of the market that he'd be going into. And that, and that, it, and that is the Knicks. I mean, he could, could ideally, could he, could he fit a good position there? Yes, because even with the shooting problem, um, defensively, um, Ben Simmons is very good. But the pro, but the problem is. Again, the New York market. You kn- you know as well as I do how um how absolutely picky they are, especially especially when it comes to the uh, media end of, of New York. Oh yeah. So they would eat they would eat him for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Hmm. Dinner, second breakfast, 
it's a fucking buffet at this point. <laughs> hey, brunch isn't just for Sundays. Yipper. Um, now, as far as the Toronto Raptors, um, I see them. I see them in the middle of a, of a re, of a rebuilding period. I don't see them going. I don't see them getting even close to the playoffs. But at the very least, you're not you're not returning to the face planting mascot again. But you're not going far. They got they got lucky getting the one player, and they had to blow things up a little bit. You're 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 off. The, you're on the money on that one at least. Mm-hmm. Um, it is unfortunate that you couldn't get Kawhi to st- to to stay for a while longer. Although, given the given how he's been performing, maybe that was for the best. Just get rid of him and try and rebuild. Hey, uh, hindsight twenty twenty hindsight being twenty twenty, they lucked out. Mm-hmm. They absolutely lucked out. But the last end of the Eastern Conference we have is the Washington Wizards. Who? And look, you're a team in D.C. Being fucked is inevitable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I'd say, I'd say, I'd say once again, once again, the pr- the problem is they um they don't have they don't have anybody they can really bu- they can really build around so all they can, all they can do is just is just throw draft picks and hope for the best but you're not going to get many result you're not going to get much in the way of results with that but then then we get to the western conference starting with the Dallas Mavericks they get Dallas has a lot of has a lot of good things in their favor but it fe- but it feels like they're not quite ready yet. Like it's it's like they need one it's like they need one or two significant pieces in order to, in order to actually do anything. So apparently you apparently you can have a decent team by just by just throwing money at a bunch of Europeans. I mean, hey, throwing money throwing money at Europeans seemed to work pretty well for hockey. <laughs> And if you listen, if you listen close, you can hear Brian Burke screaming in the distance. Yeah. Oh, that's a regular occurrence at that this time of night. <laughs> He's howling at the moon. Oh. Um, and bitching about hockey. Don't worry, we'll get we'll get to that next month. I'm sorry, Brian. Was that the style at the time? <laughs> Then we get to the Denver Nuggets, and once again, this is a case of they should be doing better than they are. True. Well, the 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 last few times that the last few times that they've been in, they um they had a case where they would they would kick ass in the first half of a series, and then just decide to completely check the fuck out. So. I see them as a second as I see them as a second round exit. But I don't see them going any further. I don't see them going very far because I feel like their win I feel like their window is starting to close and they're running out of chances. Um speaking speaking of a closed window, let's talk about Houston. <laughs> you have reached a special level of you have reached a special first off, um you already have to deal with one degree of fucking because you're a, because you're a team in Houston and the succubus still wants payment. It will always love payment. It will always suck you dry. Secondly, um, the the big pro- the big problem that the big problem that I keep seeing with the with the Rockets is once again doubling down on names instead instead of building teams. And be- I mean, there was there were all there were all the years where Har- where Harden would kick ass in the regular season and then not show up in the playoffs. And I very I very I very much get the I very much get the same get the same vibe still. As an aside, you have to reach a special level of hell when you manage to be more unlikable than the Warriors. 
Which, speaking of that, I forgot. I forgot about those guys. No, oh, um, yeah. The em the Warriors Empire is dead. The only th the only re the only remnant of it left, like ne like Nero watching the watching Rome get sacked, is Curry. And I do think I I do think um, I do think Curry is to a certain degree underrated, but a lot but um. A lot of a lot of the pieces that made that Warriors dynasty are gone, and Curry's good, but he's not good enough to hold to ca to carry the whole team on his own. Mm -hmm. I agree. So, I I get the feeling you're gonna see a you're gonna see a first round exit for first round or second round exit when it comes to them. Not not a whole lot else. Speaking of second round exits, let's talk about the Clippers. Congratulations! You actually made it past the second round this time. Wow! And then by next year, congratulations! You're once again unable to get past the second round. It's gonna be the same fucking thing, bro. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Dis I can't disagree. I really feel like. The, I really feel like the only time, only reason they got to the third round this time around was because they got was because of all the injuries during the playoffs, and they just happened to get they lucky. They got fucking lucky. Um, I will I I will say this. Um, I have no I have no idea why Kawhi Leonard was so high on Paul George. He's he's not that good. Like he can he can he can hold. I'm not saying he's a scrub, but he but I wouldn't say I wouldn't say he's um second guy good. And. When it comes to when it comes to Kawhi, um, he seems to have gas issues. And he seems to get he seems to he seems to run out of fuel really fast. Mm -hmm. But the thing, but the thing is with them, I feel I feel like I feel like they're going to be in the attitude of we need we need to we need to win something in the next few years, otherwise we're going to be fucked when t when it when time comes to pay up. Especially with all, especially with all of those draft picks they gave to Oklahoma. <laughs> uh, then we get to the other ha the other half of Los Angeles with the Lakers, and um, I feel bad for Anthony Davis. He seems to be the only he seems to be the only guy who's really who's who's really putting any any sort of any sort of effort. The Lakers have this bad habit of doing really good, and then they decide to just check out. The worst case of this kind of thing is LeBron. He seems to be the master of icing himself. Despite all of it, despite all of his talents, he does he the mo the moment the moment things don't seem to be going his way, he it's just a case of well time time to time to just check time to just check out and and head to the hotel. I wouldn't be surprised if you end up seeing a whole lot of drama in that LA locker room because I'm pretty sure the rest of his team is pissed off of him walking uh, out of Game Seven. This is why we have RDC World for. <laughs> but yeah, Laker Nation will continue to be toxic. The rest of us will continue to laugh. I see them as having a title or bust attitude, and they are going to choke again. They're gonna bust hard. Also, there's the fact that for whatever, for whatever reason, they're still paying Kyle Kuzma. Oh yeah, they're fucked. Kyle Kuzma fucking sucks. They're fucked. Mm-hmm. Um. Then we get to the Memphis Grizzlies, and this is another case of they got something there, but I'm not. But I'm not entirely confident in in them making any noise. They're cer they're cer they're certainly not bottom of the barrel, but they're in that mid they're in that middle ground where they're not re they're not ready for any for any sort of postseason stuff, but they've got but they've got some stuff to at least win so at least win some games in the regular season. Um, then well, it's time for me to break out the liquor. Uh oh, it's that time already, eh? Yep, I got I got to talk about my Timberwolves. I have Sorry, heard Monk, they're fucked. <laughs> yeah. They had I 
I was the one. I seem to be the one person in the Twin Cities Metro, who who was not high, who was not high up on the idea of of um, Flip's kid, um, being head coach when he when he didn't have a whole lot of experience beforehand. It's like yeah, Flip Saunders is a legend here here in Minnesota, and it and um and I could and it was a and it was a sad day when he passed because especially since he um. If he if if he had if he had not died when he did, there may there may have been a distinct possibility that Kevin Garnett would have had it would have had a stake in um, ownership. Because Gar, the sole reason Garnett left was because he was because of issues he had with the owner, but Flip was acting as a um, mediator between the two. I am simplifying the matter. There's a much more detailed video on the matter on Secret Base. In, in their beef history series, but it is unfortunate. Now that being said, once again the Timberwolves are going to be dealing with the same problem that they have been dealing with for the last 30 years. They're the team of tomorrow, but not the team of today. And it's for that reason that even though they've even though they've got promising talent, they're fucked. Because as soon yep. as, because yep. the way I. Because I know what's gonna, I know what's gonna happen. Because I've been through this dance before. They're gonna get their, 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 their um up and coming stars are going to are going to do well. Then they're gonna get, then they're going to demand more money. The ownership ain't gonna be willing to pay up, and then they're gonna get traded out. I've seen this game happen my entire life. <laughs> yep. Or you have, or you have a situation like say Christian Leitner, where the where the guy just does, where the guy just can't transfer. Well enough out of college and ends up being a journeyman. Although I'd say I'd say we already have that with Jimmy Butler, given the amount of drama that he caused when he was here. And now, and now, just as many, just as much drama with the next two teams he's been in. Some people are that kind of journeyman. That's just the way it works. Um. Then we get to the Oklahoma City Thunder, and I get given given the amount of, given some of the moves that they've been making. I can't help but get the feeling that they are that they are trying to do their own process, especially get, especially given the big the big ass um, draft pick haul they got from Los Angeles. Like, it def it's one it's one of those cases of that's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see how it pays off because yeah. well, getting it well. The 76ers had a, had a big ass draft haul, and wh and how far did that get them? Not far. Mm. Not very far. Yeah. That now. Then we have the Phoenix Suns. Despite despite how things ended up turning out for them last year, I I think the Phoenix Suns are gonna are gonna be um are gonna be in the conversation for conference finals. It what it that last se that last series was a, was a case where you didn't have you you just had you just had one t you just had one team that what that um had to lose and that just happened to be the Suns. I don't I um I don't see them go I don't I don't see them w I don't see them winning again in the finals, um, but I don't but I don't see but I don't see them um choking unless th unless they have. A severe case of championship hangover. Uh, but speaking, but as far as, as going back to teams that are fucked, um, Portland. <laughs> mm -hmm. This may be this may be the final year we get of Damian Lillard and his merry band of "You're fucked," because <laughs> he wants out of he wants out. There have been there have been rumblings back and forth about him wanting out of Portland. And I can't, I can't necessarily blame, I can't necessarily blame him because it's been, a, it's been a case where he's, where he's been the guy holding, holding everything, and he's starting to have back problems because even Atlas can't carry the, can't carry the world for that long. Although the big, although once again the question is, who'd take, who'd take him? I mean, Especially after that bad back of his. Mm hmm. Could I see some? Could I see some teams being desperate enough to do it, like say Philadelphia? Yeah. 
Sure. It's just the thing. The thing about these kind of trades is both sides want to make sure that they're not getting fleeced. Because trade trading players always always is significantly more um, precarious than say trading draft picks. Draft picks will go oh, protected or unprotected. They'll get tossed about left and right without a second thought because it's a draft pick. You don't even know who, it's you. It's the idea that you're grabbing that you're grabbing somebody who might be useful. But when it com when it comes to when it comes to Portland, I think it's going to be first or second round exit, and that's it. <laughs> I don't I don't see them go I don't see them making any noise. Especially especially if Dame wants it, if Dame wants out. Um, that's he's probably not, he's probably not you're probably not going to have a situation of say pissed off Damian Lillard you know just playing over his mind to try and get an MVP that's not how it works now then we get to the Sacramento Kings <clears throat> you are irrelevant there was a point in time where you were a massive shit show, but these days you're just irrelevant. And <laughs> what's probably going to happen with the Kings is that they is that they are going to get smacked around. They're going to get smacked around by everybody, and not and not even not even sniff the play-in. But at the very at the at the very least we'll be we'll be able to we'll be able to laugh at the clown show that it that is their management yep. especially since it let's not forget that a few years ago it seemed like they were they were a playoff contender with with Boogie Cousins and then they just and then they decided to tank and so f and after that they have not recovered yikes and I can't even I can't even say that they're tanking because at the very least if you're if you're tanking then you've got some kind of plan but they just seem to just drift about they're like um they're like Detroit you know it's bad when I'm comparing you to Detroit mm -hmm. although what although who's arguably even worse the San Antonio Spurs <whistles> Spurs blow it up you are fucking dead. You're fucking dead, and you're fucking fucked. <laughs> and be, at the very, at the very least, could you at least blow it? Could you at least blow it up for for our brother Homer's sake? Because he has he has the unfort he ha he he ends up getting himself fucked two ways. One, he's a Spurs fan, and two, in his in his native Philippines, he's an he's an Aces fan. Oh, oh, oh! You poor bastard. So yeah, at the very at the very least, blow it up because what you've got right now ain't ain't working. Oh. Then, last but certainly not least, we end up with the Utah Jazz. Well, we already know that the sports gods do not care for the Mormons. And nope. I think that I think that they'll make the playoffs, but I don't think that they're going to go very far. I. I don't. I see them going first round exit at most. Um. But and I know I know this seemed a bit short a bit short, but that's because even even though the NBA is technically unfucked, the big problem the big problem that you have is that is that you have a you have a significant imbalance. You can you kind of have the um, AFC NFC pro problem from a few years ago, where it's where the NFC was was a was an absolute joke. Um, because you look at you look at the Eastern Conference, and it's a whole lot of it's a whole lot of flotsam and jetsam with a couple with a couple of good teams, or te or teams that should be good on paper at the very least. And in although in the West, I'd say there, I'd say there's a lot more interesting things going on. But if I had if I had to pick one as far as as far as who's as far as who's likely to to ha to have a decent shot as as out as 
as out there as it as out there as it might be. Um I'm I feel I feel the strongest about Phoenix. In ter in terms of in terms of who might make it in. I I can't help but get the feeling that Phoenix is gonna be back in the finals. One of the two finalists are definitely going to make it back in. I, th I, th I think it's just they've got a taste; they want more. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, for as far as who to pick between them, I have to shrug. Um, I realize this might sound a bit odd, given given what I said about them, or given what I said earlier, but I don't think the Bucks are get. I don't think the Bucks are coming back. Um, this year, no. I, I, if if I were to if someone were to hold a gun to me, I'd be like, yeah, I w I wouldn't bet on the Bucks. Yeah, um, I think they're in the same boat as the Chiefs in the NFL. Like they're a one and done. Um, I if I take taking them taking them off the board, I would I wouldn't be surprised if the if the finals that we're talking about in in a few months. Is um, Suns and Celtics? Call it a gut feeling, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to be eating an ass load of crow in ten months. But that's that's the vibe that I'm getting right now. I know I know that contradicts what I said what I said about them about them running off a bunch of a bunch of guys. But the problem is once you take the once you take the Bucks and the and the set and the Sixers out of the equation, since I don't th since I don't have high hopes for either of them come, um, get getting that far. The Celtics seem to be the strong seem to be the strongest case, and although I will say, if we end up with a Celtics Suns final, I would want the Suns to win that just so we could enjoy the nuclear amounts of salt coming from Boston. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I would not. I, I I would tune in to that salt mine. Yes. Look, we're already get we're already gonna get we're already gonna get at least we're getting we're getting we're gonna be getting Boston salt for a while from two sports. We may as well make it a trifecta. Fucking a. Um. But I do, I do get the fee. I um. But what? I, if there's one thing that I do think I'm gonna have to call out when it comes to low cowdom, it is the NBA media. This, last year, last year especially, because it's it's because after after a lot of the big after a lot of the big names were out were out of the playoffs, you had you had media and you had and you had NBA fans going acting as if this is the worst um, playoffs ever just because. Just because LeBron or Ky or Kyrie or Curry isn't in it, and this is this is this is a phenomenon that I only see in the NBA. You, I don't see this kind of thing in the NFL, and I certainly don't see this thing in hockey. In fact, I'd would say I'd say the whole idea of of bit of building the playoffs all all around a few stars is just is not sustainable, even in the best years of hockey. I mean, as much as people romanticize the the Gretzky years, it's not it's it's not like he, it's not like it was Gretzky and a bunch of scrubs back then. And in this, of course, of course, the, of course, there's also the fact that um, if there's one per, if there's one person in NBA, if there's one type of type of person in the NBA NBA media end of things that. I have that I have a bit of a problem with. Oddly enough, it's not Stephen A. Smith. It's Max Kellerman. Really? I <sighs> He was br he was brought in as the replacement when sh when um when Skip when Skip ended up go ended up going to Fox to uh, to act uh, to act as the opposite to Shannon Sharp. And um he always he always struck me as way too much of a yes man and somebody who is more comfortable talking about boxing than he is than he is about. Um, That's because he is more comfortable talking about boxing, but HBO decided to fuck off with boxing. Yeah. Um. 
And the thing, the thing is, whenever he's talking about any sort, any sort of ball, any sort of sports ball, he always feels ridiculously out of place. And un- unfortunately, the thing that made the thing that made first take interesting was ha- was having two strong personalities that were complete opposites of each other. And Kellerman's not a, not enough of an opposite. Um, of course, the of course on the other on the other side of things, the bigger clown. As much as as much as much as I enjoyed some of the some of the jokes people made about made about me in comp- in comparison to the guy during his prime, I don't like Shaq. <laughs> yeah, I re I re. Oh, although now granted, um, you can always make an e- you can always make an easy insult to any time he's any time he's ranting about younger players by just saying. You thought Shaq Fu was a good idea. <laughs> Actually, let me let me raise you one. You thought Kazam was a good idea. <laughs> Everybody gives Space Jam a whole lot of shit. Nobody get not enough people give Kazam shit. Right. When it, des- when it deser- as b- as bad as Have Space you watched Sea Jam- of Steel? Yes. I still say Kazam is worse. Oh yeah, he wrapped in Kazam. To be fair, I um, I came I came this close to having to suffer through um Shaq's album, and <laughs> I am very I am very glad that I managed to dodge that bullet. But when it comes to, but when but the thing the thing with the the thing with the NBA media is that for whatever reason, they only seem to think that New York and L and LA areas exist. I know that I know that there's this that there's always been this issue in sports with um with small market teams getting treated like shit. But <laughs> at, but at the ver- at the very least, actually be a damn reporter. Not every not everything begins and ends in Los Angeles. Especially these days, when the whole, when the whole, when half of the city smells like shit, and <laughs> all right, all right, okay, I can't I can't really say that because that because then I immediately think of the um of the of the gag in Futurama. But it was like it was like the apocalypse happened. Yep, that's L.A. There were kids yeah. with guns <laughs> shooting each other. Dude, you're that's in L.A. LA. <laughs> yep. <laughs> There's ru- ruined buildings as far as the eye can see. This guy's not really getting it, is he? Yep. Like the only place with worse traffic is Atlanta. You've never driven in Montreal. Okay, let me rephrase my let me rephrase that. The the only place with wor- the only place with worse traffic in the US. Fair play. I gotta live through that shit. <laughs> Yeah, I f- I feel ba- I feel bad for who I feel I feel bad for whoever um ha- whoever has to do ins- has to do insurance <laughs> in hell in in um in Atlanta. In the vi- oh the vi- eh. at the very least it's the home of it's the home of White Wolf, so you can hang that on your hat. True. Sure. I would I would bring up Atlanta United, but only weirdos like us know about that. But if it's if it seems like this one's a bit padded, this was a this was a lighter ep- episode. We will um next month um the men who stare at sports ball will return with the real shit because we are a f- we are a few weeks removed from the start of hockey season. Yeah, buddy. That is that to me is the main event because unlike a lot of other sports, we can make all the predict you can make a reasonably accurate prediction. In when it comes when it comes when it comes to the layout of football or basketball, most predictions that we end up making when it comes to the start of hockey end up being full of shit by the end of by the end of the season. Not and not by anyone's fault either. It's sh- it's just that hockey is extremely unpredictable. Dude, I got tickets to to, to watch the Ottawa Sixty Sevens, a CHL level team, so <laughs> I'm ready for the hockey to restart. 
And hey, at the hey at the very at the very least, it's for me at least it's fu it's fun to watch it when when I'm when I'm not when I'm at an age where I don't have to be um smack smack dab in the middle of it because. Hmm. Although to, although to be fair, around that time I there was um my my coach had protected me with the whole line of hey it's a contact sport if the, if he, if they can't get if they can't get out of the way things happen. Seriously, you could probably solve a lot of problems in other sports by just by just let by just letting players fight it out when that whenever the whenever the fists start flying, instead of instead of everybody coming out to break the thing up. They're gonna get into it eventually. You may as well let it get it. May as well let them get it out of their system. Yep. But that is going to do it for this particular ep ep this particular instance of the man who stared at sports ball. This was a little bit of a this was a little bit of a last minute addition, which is which is which is why there's not which is why the strength isn't quite there, and I'm getting a debate about whether or not I'll be doing this when we get to the NBA Finals. Give give me a give me a little bit of time and I'll and I'll see. But until then, on behalf of the Good Brothers, present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your Gibby Monk. Stay. Fucking frosty, everybody! <laughs>